Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Sports Tour on Enterprise Television. This is the program where we give you the lowdown of the major happenings in sports. I'm Joshiko Koli. We are live and here is what we'll be looking at today. The Super Falcons of Nigeria to take on Francis Le Bleu in a high profile friendly. In Formula 1, Saubert have announced that Brazilian Gabriel Botileto will start for them in the 2025 F1 season. Real Madrid, Manchester City both humiliated in UEFA Champions League as Liverpool destroy Alonso's Leverkusen. Let's take a short break on Sports Store. When we return, we will dive into our package for the day. Welcome back to Sports Tour on Enterprise Television and fresh from our two-match friendly duel with the Green Ladies of Algeria in Nigeria, nine-time African champions, the Super Falcons, are billed to play the senior women's national team of France, Le Bleu, in a high-profile friendly in France on Saturday, 30th November 2024. The Super Falcons slashed the Green Ladies 2-0 and 4-1 in games played in Ikene Remo and Lagos, respectively with a good number of home-based professionals showing great promise in the squad coached by coach Justin Madugu. This month's encounter with Le Bleu will take place at the Stade Raymond Copa in the city of Angers with kickoff set for 9.30 p.m. France time. While Le Bleu are happy to take the game as part of their preparations for the Nations League in the spring and the 2025 UEFA Euro Women's Championship in Switzerland in the summer. The Falcons will welcome the encounter as part of the process for blooding a new squad as well as another test ahead of the 2025 Women's Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco next summer. It is only the seventh time in the history of Les Bleus that they will play in the city of Angers. In Formula 1, Saubert have confirmed Brazil's Gabriel Botileto will drive in 2025 alongside German driver Nico Hockenberg as the team prepares to transition to the Aldi Works team for 2026. The team announced on Wednesday morning that Valtteri Bottas and Zhou Guanyu will leave at the end of the season and Sao Paulo's Botileto joined for Formula 2 and leads the Formula 2 championship with two rounds remaining. The 20-year-old driver joined McLaren's junior program in 2023 and Botileto won the F3 championship last season before moving over to Formula 2 in 2024. European heavyweight Real Madrid and Manchester City both suffered big defeats in UEFA Champions League on Tuesday. Uh, Real Madrid were defeated 3-1 by AC Milan and, um, um, and, and of course Sporting Lisbon defeated Manchester City 4-1 with Erin Haaland missing a penalty and City squandering a fourth minute uh, early goal in that particular encounter. Um, Sporting Lisbon's coach, Ruben Amorim, will soon take charge of Crosstown rivals Manchester United. And before their game, Sporting fans displayed a huge TIFO tanking Ruben Amorim in his last home game before he takes over at Manchester United. Phil Foden then got City off to a flying start in the fourth minute, only the second goal Sporting has considered in four games this competition in their last four games in, in, in of the season and of course Swedish forward Victor Gjokeres scored a hat-trick as Sporting came roaring back into the encounter. Gjokeres first equalized in 38 minutes after a perfect true ball from Giovanni Quenda before Maximiano Araujo made it 2-1 right after the break. Gjokeres then made it 3-1 from the penalty spot after Joshko Gvardiol was penalized for a shove on Francesco Trincao in the penalty area and Erling Braut Holland's penalty hit the cross but before Gjokeres showed his Scandinavian brother, the Norwegian, how it's done with another spot kick at the other end to complete the scoring. It is the first time since 2018 that City has lost three straight games, coming off a defeat to Tottenham Hotspur in the English League Cup and lost to Bournemouth in the Premier League. In Spain, Christian Pulisic sent 
in a corner for Malik Thiao to head AC Milan into a 12th minute lead, ensuring that Real Madrid defending champions trailed in a third straight game in the Champions League this season. The 15 time champion had already lost to surprise team Lille in their second game, but this time around Vinicius Jr. equalized from the penalty spot in the 23rd minute after he had been tripped. But Alvaro Morata pounced on the rebound after Andrea Lunin saved Rafael Leal's shot to rest the visitors lead against his former club. Morata, who had already been given a hostile reception from the home fans, who evidently remembered the goal he scored to take Juventus through to the 2015 final at their team's expense, was booed by the home fans. And Dutchman Tijani Reyindas scored Milan's third goal as the home fans made their frustrations known at the Santiago Bernabeu. It was a much better evening for Liverpool as Luis Diaz scored a hat-trick and Cody Gakpo grabbed another goal in a 4-0 win over German champion Bayer Leverkusen at Anfield that marred Chabi Alonso's return to his old home. The Leverkusen coach was given a warm welcome in his return to the club where he became a fan favourite as a player over five seasons between 2004 to 2009. Alonso won the Champions League with Liverpool in 2005, scoring the third goal goal in the 3-3 miracle of Istanbul against Ancelotti's AC Milan man now coaches Real Madrid. Liverpool moved to the top of the Champions League league phase with four wins from four games. A perfect record for the Reds followed by Sporting and Monaco both on 10 points after three wins and a draw. And under the new 36 team format introduced by UEFA this season, the top eight teams advance directly to the next round and those from 9th to 24th enter playoffs to reach it while the bottom 12 are eliminated. And in other game, German forward Niklas Kuhn scored twice as Celtic defeated Leipzig 3-1 at home. Juventus drew 1-0 at Lille with Lille midfielder Edson Zegorova eluding two defenders before playing a perfect pass to Canadian Jonathan David who fired inside the far post but Dusan Vlahovic the Serb equalized with a penalty for the Italian outfit. For Borussia Dortmund Daniel Malian scored late for Dortmund to beat Sturm Graz 1-0 at the Weissa Stadium and Tilo Kera did likewise for Monaco to beat Bologna in Italy. United States midfielder Malik Tillman scored one goal and set up another as PSV Eindhoven beat Spanish team Girona 4-0 in the Netherlands. Dinamo Zagreb dealt Slovan Bratislava its fourth straight defeat in the competition as the visitors came from behind to win 4-1 in Bratislava. All the nine games that were played, let me give you the result of all the nine games that were played in the Champions League on Tuesday. PSV Eindhoven 4, Girona 0, Slovan Bratislava 1, Dinamo Zagreb 4, Bologna 0, Monaco 1, Borussia Dortmund 1, Sturm Graz 0, Celtic 3, Leipzig 1, Liverpool 4, Bayer Leverkusen 0, Lille 1, Juventus 1, Real Madrid 1, AC Milan 3, Sporting Lisbon 4, Manchester City 1. And joining us virtually to discuss proceedings, to discuss the UEFA Champions League, I have Chijoke Eziali, sports journalist with the Nation Newspaper and Sporting Life. He's also a sports podcast host and content creator. CJ, welcome to the program. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's wonderful to be here, Josh. I'm so happy to join you on this amazing, amazing show. Okay, um, you are a Manchester United fan, so I'm going to start up with that. Ruben Amorim, before the match, said if he loses against um against Man City, it will be like okay, business as usual. But if he wins, the United fans will think he is the second coming of Sir Alex Ferguson. And then doing so against the noisy neighbours in commanding fashion, Victor Gioca is mm. a hat trick. Something that I mean, I can't remember the last time my United player scored a hat trick. He also scored four goals on Friday against Estrella in uh, the Primera Liga in Portugal. And Erlin Holland mm. has been on a goal drought. He also missed a penalty. Is Ruben Amorim going to revitalize Manchester United season? Um, I'm coming in when he comes in next week. Well, as a fan, I would hope that would be the case and um, that will help the club. The club has been struggling since Alex Ferguson left the club. Yes. The role of future field at Mario who won the Europa um, League um, under um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. They, they struggled, they know we editing. We got, we got three different finals um, under Van Hal, they picked up the FA Cup, and under the recent past manager Ten Hag, 
uh, the one, the Color Ball Cup and the FA Cup. Um, unfortunately, he got sacked. No manager has been able to do three seasons after um, Star Alex Ferguson. But Amorin coming uh, should be a breath of fresh air. He's the youngest manager ever, ever to coach Manchester United at 39. He's doing extremely, extremely well. And just take a look at what he did last season. Um, last season, he won the league by a massive 10 points. And you know, um, Lisbon was nowhere. Was nowhere four seasons ago. He came on board um, two seasons back. He came fourth, I think. And last season, he won the league. And this season, he has already a 100% record out of 10 uh, matches. He has won every single game. He has scored a lot loads of goals. Uh, his last league game would be against Braga and they are hoping he would also win that before coming to um, Manchester United. But to answer your question, um, very straightforward. I would tell you um, that Amory would be a very good coach. He would be one that would give um, the likes of Pep Guardiola a headache when it comes to um, taxes in the Premier League because he has been fantastic. But I love what he said actually when they asked him um, is this your best result, beating Manchester City by four goals to one? He said, well, his best was when he lost 5-0 against Manchester City. And the fans applauded him because they saw what he did for the team. And they saw how the team was building. And they saw the work that was going into that particular team. And that tells you about his mentality. That tells you about his strength. That tells you about a manager that knows his onion. And he said, he will come to Manchester United at the first six months. He will put up his social media, his gadgets. He will not listen or read anything because he wants to be focused. And he warned the Manchester United fans ahead of his coming already when he said, don't expect us to play the same way with Sporting Lisbon. We have to adapt to the way Manchester United play. And from there, we build our own history. And I believe in him. And I, I'm hoping, as a United fan again, that he would come through for Manchester United. Okay, talking about coming through for Manchester United, let's go. You know, a lot of since the likes of Ronaldo, David Beckham, um, Ruth Van Nistelrooy, Gabriel Heinze, um, um, switched mm. from United to Real Madrid. Um, yeah. lots of United fans also have an affinity to Real Madrid. Uh, there are some in the minority anyway that do not have an affinity to Real Madrid, but lots of United fans have an affinity to Real Madrid, and Real Madrid have not started the season on their own high terms their own high standards mm. what do you think is the problem for real madrid remember they lost to lille monday two of the champions league monday three of the champions league i mean you i could act i could virtually blame borussia dortmund for you know trying to park the bus as early as the 60th minute yeah, so, they collapsed and, and then they collapsed the and then against ac milan they also lost at home so what is going on with Real Madrid beating 4 0 in the classical, struggling despite the wide array of attacking talent that they have. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll start with the obvious one. The obvious one is that they, they are struggling with loss of form, a massive loss of form at the moment, and they're also struggling with a little bit of injury. I remember um, David Alaba hasn't played at all this season, and they miss his leadership. Um, yes, he's not, he's not he's usually very calm very um he's not the fastest player at the back but his leadership skills has been missed uh, at the back line uh, Rudy had him play against Barcelona and he showed they suffered a heavy 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 loss on um, four zero Cavajal one of my best right back I call him uh, perhaps the modern um number two like he's 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 a footballer you could study to play the role of uh, a right back. right back he has been missing through the injuries also so that's also of injuries and loss of form but now let's come to the attacking array of attacking talents at real madrid yes if you look at the attacking setup you see they are not supposed to be losing games like that because if you check mbappe vinicius uh rodrigo also is injured um yeah um, Brian Diaz is just coming back um, from injury the um, Gula is still have... used Hendrik is also on the bench yeah. Uh, Edric is also on the bench. So they, they have attacking talent. But um, the thing is, they've not gotten that dynamic between Vinicius and Mbappe. Because Mbappe loves playing from the from the left flank. And Asalotti has played him continuously down the middle. So it's really a struggle for Bellingham him. Bellingham is not being played um, in the position he was played last season as well. 
Yeah, but um, Vinicius was started to be the world player of the year. He was not to Rodri. To me, I would say it's Bellingham was a better player for Real Madrid. So you you want to bench bench to um Vinicius for Mbappe if you if you look at um the Ballon d'Or ratings, but uh, Mbappe needs 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 to really up his game, play more intelligently. Like Benzema even said during the week that Mbappe's best position is from the left side of midfield, not playing centrally. So maybe Madrid needs to get a central um striker to be time they've been going linked to Mbappe for over two seasons. I'm sorry, um Haaland for over two seasons. Ellen Haaland for over two seasons now and I don't know if they would want to go for him and try to find the dynamics of um Vinicius and Mbappe right because both players at the same time on the pitch can't struggle to play on the same side. But Mbappe always wants to drift to the left side. Vinicius can't play in the middle, so he also wants to stay uh, at the left side. So it's a problem for Real Madrid. It makes um, defending against Real Madrid very easy. All you need to do is just pack players at the left side of your team, and you just stop Real Madrid attack going forward. Joe Bellingham is so angry because he can't really play this game because he needs the guys from the left or the right side to be very active for him to run into the box and finish from his midfield position. So right now it's not happening for him and he's playing deeper um, this season or like last season because of the arrival of Mbappe. So it's really, really difficult for Real Madrid. One, it's loss of form. Secondly, it's too many injuries. And thirdly, they've not gotten the dynamics of the Mbappe Vinicius conundrum. So maybe maybe that has affected them. And it showed yesterday they just had no answers for a, a team like AC Milan that has struggled also in the Italian Serie A. We were expecting Real Madrid to handle them at least, but yeah. it just didn't happen. Definitely. On Wednesday, there will be nine matches played in the UEFA Champions League. Club Brugge will take on Aston Villa. Shakhtar Donetsk will host Young Boys. Sparta Pura will trade tackles with Brest. Very impressive team in the Champions League. Bayern München mm. will trade tackles with Benfica. Inter Milan against Arsenal. Feyenoord against Salzburg. Uh, Red Star Belgrade against Barcelona. PSG against Atletico Madrid. And Stuttgart versus Europa League champions Atalanta. Um, CJ. Inter yes. Arsenal. It's perhaps to me the biggest game is perhaps be the game between Bayern München and Benfica because these are the two sides to have won the Champions League. Arsenal has not won the Champions League. I'm sorry, Arsenal fans, that you might feel shady, but it, it's just the truth. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Inter Milan Arsenal is perhaps the biggest game in this part of the world. Um, who's your money on to win? Wow, um, very straightforward question. I will not give you a straightforward answer. I'll just do a little bit of analysis around that before. I'll leave, I'll leave it an open-ended um, one for um, the fans or the viewers to uh, make their choices. But Arsenal are really struggling. Um, Arsenal are struggling this season. Uh, yes, they won their last Champions League game by an own goal. And if that means they got stuck in that one. Bukaya Saka just came back from injury. Um, he's also struggling for fitness. Odega just came back to training. Yeah. I'm not sure he will start this particular one. Um, right. Inter Milan, um, right. Inter Milan well. not been, yeah, Inter Milan has not been themselves also, um, this season. But when you have Lato Martinez, who had a very, really good shout, uh, for the Ballon d'Or last, um, last season, um, instilling the team, you, you know, it's a team that can hurt you. And I like that left back, um, uh, I like the left back. I like the way he shoots. I like the, um, Marco now. I like the way he, he dictates play from the left side. I also love the former Manchester United uh, player, the Mkhitaryan. Yeah. Uh, so it will be a very, very tight battle. Um, I think the player at the San Siro. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's really, really going to be a difficult one. Um, I'm not looking at Arsenal winning. And it will be difficult also for Inter Milan to, to pick a win in this one. So uh, whatever the result we decide. So, you, so you're being Humpty Dumpty, you're sitting on the fence. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, for Arsenal fans, it's good to know that the last time that they were at the San Siro in the Champions League, they beat AC Milan 2-0 and then, uh, during the Henry era, uh, that was just be 2004, mm. the invisible season, they beat Inter Milan 5-1 in this same stadium to go to the next round that they lost to Chelsea and, Invisible season, they only won the Premier League. <laughs> but it's, 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 topic, it's topic for another day. Uh, that's how much we can take on Sports Store for the day. Endeavor to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are Enterprise TV 7 on YouTube. Click the notification bell to get alerts on our new YouTube videos. 
Follow us on all our social media platforms. We are Enterprise TV 7 on Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. Like, share, and engage with our content. And also visit our website, www.enterprisetvnews.com, where we give you all the hot stories on the news. Moreover, if you want to partner with us on Enterprise Television, you want to place your product on our platform, and for all sponsorship, commercial, and advertising inquiries, kindly send a mail to enterprisetv7 at gmail.com or send a DM to our aforementioned social media handles at Enterprise TV 7. CJ, thank you very much for your incisive analysis on the program and we hope um, Ruben Amorim gives you what you desire as a My United fan. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay. Um, thanks for having me on the show. Definitely, we'd love to have you another time. And before we go, let's leave you with this quote from King Pele, the greatest footballer of all time. You, Messi, Ronaldo fans, Pele is the goat. Uh, he said, and I quote, success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. End quote. I'm Joshika Okoli, and we thank you for the privilege of your time. Until we meet again on Sports Store, it's goodbye and hasta luego. Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.